What's up guys and welcome back to our YouTube fishing family to AFNS Outdoors. I'm Justin Lewis and we've got a little bit of a scene change here. Uh, have not put out a video in a few weeks due to a couple reasons. The first of which is that we moved, uh, which was kind of nice because now I have this awesome little workspace, uh, which is great here in the garage. So a uh, lot going on. If you guys had seen some of our past videos, we've been pumping out some soft plastic baits over the winter because the weather hasn't been really nice. Well, it's just into March here in Iowa and the weather is starting to warm up and I would love to get out and fish. A buddy of mine went to one of our favorite ponds the other day and was hammering some four and five pounders, even got a six pound bass. Uh, so I'd love to be out there, but unfortunately I'm kind of laid up at the moment. So I'll give you a look at this. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm kind of laid up at the moment. That is apparently what happens when you tear all of the ligaments and tendons in your foot and ankle. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to get creative with these crutches to get out and catch some fish. So I got the racking system up, all of our tackle and stuff is over there. I've been doing some spring prep. I've got some stuff that I need to order, a couple reels, some lines, stuff like that. Uh, but one of the things that I wanted to do was take the bait behind me here, and this is really just, um, a big pile of baits that was in a five gallon bucket from last season. Um, primarily soft plastics through kind of the fall period. Um, and I wanna get these remelted. So this is one of the best ways that I can kind of envision like recycling those baits that we're using is kind of getting them sorted out, remelting them, and then injecting them into brand new baits that I can use this year. So what I did was I've just been, I literally tossed baits on the bottom of our boat. And at the end of the day, I just toss them into a bucket and over time they kind of accumulate. And so what I've done is I've literally just dumped the bucket and I've sorted kind of by color here. So let me kind of give you guys a look, maybe a little bit closer look as to what's going on. So this is just all leftover baits. Uh, that I have taken out of that bucket and kind of broken up and went ahead and just arranged by some color pattern here So kind of got like the white pearl colors. We've got the orangish orange green pile This is primarily like the the green pumpkin pile the black and blue pile And then this is kind of all the extras that didn't really fit real well a lot of purple colors stuff like that So I've got really just five distinct piles of baits here, and it's just it is a lot of baits and you can kind of see like i'm not too specific i mean this one's got some white in it but it's probably going to go into the green pile this one's got a little red it'll be fine but i'll tell you guys it smells awesome in here not really um it smells like i don't know java and garlic and whatever other kind of you know sauce that these bait companies put onto uh the baits and whatever we've dipped it in or anything else. I imagine it's gonna take me all afternoon kind of to get through these, um, but it saves a little bit of money. And again, in my opinion, just recycle some plastic baits. I can kind of show you guys what I've been up to this morning already. So I've already been pouring this morning some of these craws. I liked, uh, I was trying some craws with some different claws. So we got some nice purple, blue, orange, and green going on and Quite a few swim baits up there too, just a peek. So, nice craw mold, real thick body. I love this mold. Let's get to it. Let's start melting and injecting. All right, guys, the uh, plastic's mixed up. Like I said, we've kind of got this light gray, light brown color, lots of flake. We're gonna go ahead and inject it. These are a little cold, so it might take one or two to really get them running as smooth as I'd like them, but we'll see what happens here. I'm gonna hold a little pressure there. Work that off. Jump over one. Get the next one in there. Do a little pressure. Fill up that sprue. Go back. Seems pretty good. And see if we can get the last one in there. Well, I think we ran out. It doesn't look terrible. I mean, it's kind of a just nice tannish gray color. 
good amount of flakes, so hopefully it'll turn out all right. All right, guys. Well, the last two didn't come out. Let's check these. Grab them out of here. Get that runner off. Not too bad. You know, I mean, they're not... They're not uh, award winners by any means or something that you're going to show off too much, but you know, that could pass as a, as a bait fish, minnow color, perch color, you know, gill color, something along there. And like I said, I pretty much use these almost exclusively for the backs of spinner baits and chatter baits. And I have no doubt whatsoever that here in Iowa, these are going to get eaten. So I'm going to continue on, remelt what we have in here and keep pouring. And then I'll bring you guys back when we get to the next part. Well, here's what we ended up with. I've still got about a quarter cup of this plastic. Um, I'm thinking I have to switch over to the smaller injector to kind of get all that out of there and, and get it injected. Um, or I may just save it and put it into one of the other blends. I will tell you, it got really chunky down at the bottom with all of the salt that was into these baits. Um, but we ended up with 19 or 20 of these like three and a half inch, 3.8 inch, whatever they are, ribbed swim baits. Um, like I said, I really love to use these as trailers for my spinner baits, chatter baits, things like that. Um, and quite frankly, you know, they're not a super attractive color. Um, not something that, you know, they're going to put on a shelf and, and really get a ton of attention for, but it is a nice little like minnow color or, you know, small bait fish color and the glitter in it really did withstand the reheat. So some of these just have a ton of glitter in them and you can kind of see like it's got some copper, black, silver, gold, um, just whatever was in those baits. And like I said, you know, those, those baits were really just kind of trashed, um, you know, from, from being used and catching so many fish and stuff like that, that, you know, being able to take something like that and turn it into, you know, a decent little handful of fishing lures that you can reuse. I really like that idea. All right, guys. Well, we are on to the black and blue bait. So all of the leftover black and blue baits from this past fall I've kind of got going on in here. Um, set this aside real quick. I had like four cups full of plastic after I cut them up. So this is what they look like. Again, quite a bit of black and blue, some June bugs, stuff like that in there. And once I warmed it up, get this little stir here. You guys can kind of see what that looks like. It actually looks really cool. Uh, nice blue-green color. Lots of, again, blue and green flake in there. So this one should look pretty good. I think I'm just going to go ahead and inject it straight away uh, into... This is the craw mold. So my new craw mold from BTS Molds. I really like this mold a lot. Reach around the camera here. Ooh, it is cold, so I'm guessing we're going to need to hold some good pressure on that. Not sure if this first one's going to turn out real great or not, but we'll find out. But yeah, that injector in that mold got pretty cold, but as you guys can see on that, it should be a pretty cool color, really. Well, I may be rushing this first set a little bit here, but I don't know that it injected the best. So we're just going to check it. Um, but as the mold starts to warm up a little bit, these should get a little better. Yeah. See the bottom two didn't turn out at all. Top two aren't too bad. A little, a little squishy. I think they'll set up. I don't think that's air. Let's grab these two off. Bottom two just didn't quite finish. Again, just really cold mold. Now oh, let's switch hands here so you can see it. That's really not too bad. Definitely can kind of see through the appendages there. So not too bad. Lots of glitter in there. Lots of blue and green glitter. Those look pretty good. So it's almost like a aqua green color. So it's definitely not 
you know, just straight blue or anything like that. It's definitely got more green in it than I anticipated. Or, you know, it may be the amount of green flake that's kind of throwing that off to the eye a little bit. Hopefully it's coming through on the camera. Um, but just a nice dark craw with a ton of blue and green flake is really all that's kind of showing through there. But not too bad. I mean, we are literally taking just trashed baits and giving them some new life. Pretty cool. So just wrapped up the black and blue segment of baits. And I've got to say, I'm kind of even impressed with this one myself. Uh, I got a lot of baits out of here. I think I poured 34 craws and then switched over to the beaver style baits. And I mean, I'm hoping this is coming through on the camera guys, but this is just a nice dark blue. It's almost got a little bit of violet to it, but just a ton of blue and green flake in there. And it really, really held up well through the entire pour process. Um, there is, you can kind of see maybe just a little bit of color change. Um, it looks like this one's a little bit lighter, whereas this one's a little bit darker. Might've been a little bit of a later pour. You can kind of see in the claw there versus the claw here is just not quite as see-through. But guys, I mean, take a look at this. This is 15 beaver baits and 34 craw baits. Brand new, essentially. All just because we recycled some plastic. All right, guys. Well, I am officially on day two of this remelt process. And I went ahead and just cut everything up last night. So here's what I've got left. This is about two full cups, a little bit more of the brown and orange pile that I had. We've got roughly a cup of the reds and purples. And then I've got four cups, five, six, seven of the green pumpkin to melt down. Kind of like the other colors we got going on. I don't think we're going to win any awards for this, but I tell you what, it's really not that bad. We've got a very just earthworm, earth tone, brown color, but a lot of flake in there. There is a lot of black flake, a lot of square cut black, but there is also some green, purple, pink, blue, gold, a little bit of very small red. I mean, there's quite a few colors coming across in that. So we're gonna do a big draw. That way we can get all of these filled in. Not that any of these are real big baits. But if we can get all of them done in one, that would be awesome. We're going to be close on the last Senkos. Got the Ned Rigs in. That is one round of Senkos. And last round. Oh yeah, we made it. Not too bad. Uh, here's the color. Make sure that's trying to come across pretty good on the camera here. A couple minutes later, let's crack these guys open and see what we got. Let's go reverse order. Senkos. Oh gosh. There we go. Not too shabby. Again, just a nice brown Senko with a ton of different colors in there for flake. So, pretty good with those. Same thing. Looking good. And the Ned Rigs. The little turds and yeah, they uh, they look like glittery turds. So that should work just fine. Again, I'm not too disappointed with that color. I think it's coming across on the, uh, the camera a little bit darker than it actually is. And I think the glitter is coming through on the camera. I'm pretty sure you guys can see that pretty well. Um, but they're really not a too, not a real dark bait at all. It's actually pretty light. So. I like them, should work just fine. There, that kind of 
works. Um, it's kind of an odd, just off purple, not quite maroonish color, maybe like a plum is kind of how I would describe this. But again, it has a lot of glitter in it. <laughs> you guys can, I think that's coming through pretty well on the camera. Not loving these in the craw. So kind of just a deep plum color. Definitely a lot of color, a lot of glitter in those claws. And you know, it's not, it's not terrible. I'm just not, not loving it. And let's see what these look like. Oh, these are better. So I thought I'd try to just make use of what I had left and just kind of split them half and half and just give it a little bit of a different color. So almost like that peanut butter and jelly color is kind of what we're going for here, but um, maybe a little bit darker. Although, I mean, honestly, these last couple, these really aren't too bad. So the glitter shows up really nice on both of those. I'm not too sad with that. So I may end up just pouring and I may have to hand pour because there's not a lot left to inject. Um, but I may just hand pour a few more of these and just end up with this kind of off peanut butter and jelly color. Well, we are just about done with this crazy remel process from the last fishing season. The last thing we've got going on is all of our greens, a little bit of browns in there. You can see there's some red scattered out throughout in here too, but this is primarily the green pumpkin pile. So this is obviously one of the most common bait colors that gets used here in the Midwest. So we, we use a lot of these. I'm gonna get to melting and we'll see what we end up with. Okay, well, here is how the green turned out. Man, there's a lot of salt in the bottom of that cup. I'm gonna get this really, really stirred up here. Uh, but pretty good color, honestly. So definitely just a, a green pumpkin. We've got a ton and ton of flake in there. All kinds of different colors again which I'm kind of enjoying the fact that we're cutting up a bunch of different baits and we end up with all this glitter and stuff in it. I mean, we're really just looking at kind of a green pumpkin party is really what this color looks like. 702 craw molds and the beaver style baits. And I tell you what, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna pour the remaining like five cups worth of plastic in these guys because these are basically just money in my opinion. Check out those guys. They look absolutely phenomenal. Ton of glitter in there. Coming through on the claws, throughout the entirety of the body. Love that they still have, it's, it's still thin enough that the claws are pretty transparent. Body's really nice. So between those and now the beaver style bait, which it looks like we're gonna be on this side here. Get these a little bit lined back up for you so you can see them. These two just look absolutely spectacular. Look at all the glitter in that tail. It's all of that glitter up in there. It's awesome looking. All right guys, and with that, a few hours and a couple days later, probably, I don't know, maybe in that four to five hour range is what it took to pour all of these, um, especially the last set, the green pumpkin, having those in really big cups uh, kind of took some time, especially through the reheat process. So probably should have broken those down into a little bit smaller cups. But with all that said and done, here is what we ended up with. We got approximately 250 baits. I think there's 248. So almost 250 baits, all 100% recycled did not add anything to these, nothing. No glitter, no extra plastic, absolutely nothing. And I am, honestly, I am ecstatic with how well these turned out and the ability to recycle your baits. So hopefully it's showing you guys my results with this. You guys will do some of this too. Um, I don't think it takes a lot, you know, just maybe a mold or two that you wanted and an injector and you guys can start doing this with some of your old baits. So honestly, something I wish I had been doing for quite a long time now, instead of just giving some of those old baits the pitch and, and not really doing a whole lot with them. So let me give you a close up and uh, we'll kind of go over what we ended up with and that'll end today's video. So let's take a closer look. All right, guys. Well, here is a general overview of what we've got. 
I've got all the green pumpkin colors here, the black and blue, the browns, and then these were kind of like the browns and the purple that we mixed because I didn't like the purple color really a whole lot by itself other than in the craws, they look okay in there. So I mixed some of the, the purple with the brown, um, what, what was left after we did the brown, and got some PB&J Sankos out of that. And then the rib swim baits, that came out of the clear group that had like some gray, some clear, some light tans, uh, poured all of those into a swim bait. So again, here's kind of what they ended up looking like. Um, rib swim baits, I think those are gonna be just fine for putting on the trailers and stuff like that. Um, the pile of Ned rigs, which though that is not one of my favorite ways to fish is with a Ned rig, but you know what? Uh, my favorite bait is the one that's catching fish. So if this is a ticket, that's the ticket. Um, this color turned out really good with the brown. So just a brown group, but there is a ton of glitter in those things. I mean, I'm seeing, you know, pretty much every color of glitter that I've got between black, silver, green, red, orange, yellow, purple, uh, blue. I mean, it's just, there's tons and tons of glitter in there. And it's not that the purple color came out bad. I mean, it definitely looks cool. Um, it looks nice in a craw and in a Senko, but it didn't really speak to me, I guess, um, kind of by itself, even though it, it does look rather okay. So what I decided to do is pour it into a Senko. So on one side, we've got a purple Senko and on the other, we've got the brown color. And this was just literally the leftover like quarter cup of plastic that I had after pouring all of these brown baits by themselves. I had about a quarter cup left over. So I went ahead and poured those in and then injected the purple on top of it and got a nice little laminate. That turned out cool. The black and blue group, this one was spectacular. These look outstanding. It is really just a dark, dark blue bait with blue and green glitter is really what that ended up as. It's not even black. It's not dark enough to call it black. They are definitely blue. Poured those in the craw and the beavers themselves which I love this kind of a style of flipping bait. Um, so really happy with this mold and picking up this mold. But again, this 702 craw mold might be my favorite mold there is. And as much as we use craws, those things are going to get hammered. So got a whole pile of those, not quite as much as the green pile, but we got a whole pile of those. And then the green pumpkin group which is a mix of pumpkin colors and browns. There was a little bit of orange in there. Stuff to kind of get, keep it lined up. Look at that tail, guys. Look at the colors in that tail. So much glitter in there. It is awesome. Hopefully it's coming through. But these things are just chock full of glitter. They look great. I mean, it's like that green pumpkin party color, watermelon party, whatever they want to call it. Um, so poured a bunch of beavers, poured a giant plethora of others. These aren't sitting on anything. This is just a pile of craws and they look great. I mean, look at those claws. They're transparent enough. It's awesome. The baits themselves look great. Nice, thick, chunky, soft plastic bait. I look, I like the craws like that. We did pour a few Ned rigs in these, not a ton, just like a batch. I think we got like eight of them. We poured a few Sankos. Again, I didn't pour a ton of these because green pumpkin Sankos, you know, we get those from our sponsors and stuff a lot that I don't I don't need to pour a ton of those myself. I'd rather pour these craws. Um, I like having those more than the Sankos. And then just a few, again, rib swim baits to go on the back of some chatter baits and spinner baits. But I tell you what guys, 250 brand new baits all out of recycled plastic. We took all of that trash essentially that we had saved up, ripped baits, torn up baits, baits that have been left in the sun, left out on the boat, whatever it might be, took all of those, put them into color groups, and then spent you know a few hours pouring over a couple days and this is what we ended up with and I'm super stoked about it. So that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, and maybe, you know, it's just a little bit of inspiration to save some of that plastic. Like I said, there are bait companies that will take in plastic. You can send it to them. Um, some of you give them discounts, some give you product or, you know, it's not too, not too bad to get into this. I will say like, if you get into it and you get addicted, you're going to spend a ton of money. Um, but you know, grabbing an injector and a mold and a Pyrex cup to pour some of these, especially even just out of remelt, 
fantastic process. Very rewarding, very rewarding that this stuff didn't go in the trash and that we're gonna get to reuse it, put it back to use. And um, you know, once these are garbage, we'll remelt them again and hopefully catch some more fish with them and just keep that cycle up. Um, I did not lose a lot of plastic. Um, I was curious as to how much I would lose. I tell you what, I only lost a little bit out of the bottom of each batch where the salt was so thick, it almost made like the plastic really, really hard. Um, so we lost at, like next to nothing out of this and put all of it to use. Um, I've just got some tiny little, maybe couple millimeter thick little pucks out of the bottom of the cups that wasn't usable plastic and that was it. So glitter held up, everything held up really well. Very impressed. So as always, thank you guys for tuning in to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did hit that like button, if you haven't yet hit the subscribe button, we're going to have a lot of fishing adventures now that the open water is coming up. Hopefully my leg and ankle is going to heal up pretty quick and we're going to be out on the water. So appreciate you guys liking, subscribing as always take care. We'll see you next time right here on AFNS Outdoors.